My daughter joined a Christian group at college. When she came back, she cut me off because I had an abortion in the past. The day after I graduated high school, my childhood sweetheart and I were married, and a year later my beautiful daughter Moira was born. When Moira was six, I got pregnant again, but it was an ectopic pregnancy that eventually needed surgery, which included removing the fetus and part of the fallopian tube the fetus was growing in. Moira didn't know I was pregnant at the time, only that mommy had been sick and needed to be in the hospital for a little while. Three years later my husband left me, and it was just Moira and me. We were always very close, so much so that Moira sometimes called me Lorelei because we were just like the Gilmore girls, just not as much witty banter. This was until she went to a state college about three hours away. We would still talk on the phone every day, and she would come home for the weekend a few times a month. But I understood that she needed her space as she developed as a functional adult, so I tried to give her as much space as she needed. Sometime early in her sophomore year, she joined an evangelical Christian campus group and started dating Dirk, the president of the group. I'm not 100% sure which came first. This put a chill on our relationship as I go to church on Sundays at a community church that is rather liberal in its theology and generally have a live and let live attitude towards others. Too many of our calls or visits began to devolve into Moira preaching at me how I was living a sinful life and how I needed to find a man and remarry because being single was bad and other stuff that I tried to work around to maintain the relationship as best that I could. That spring semester, COVID shut down her school, but instead of coming home, Moira moved in with a neighbor of Dirk's family, which was about 700 miles away. Our conversations went from daily to maybe twice a week and were shorter as well, as if Moira was impatient to get the calls over with. Our text messages were also almost exclusively one way, me sending her all the weird stuff I always did and her mostly just replying with one word or something like that. That summer, Moira told me she was dropping out of school and she and Dirk were engaged and they'd be building a life in Dirk's hometown. This was pretty rough news for me, but I do feel like while I tried to push back gently, I was as supportive as I could be. The wedding was in October of that year, and it was a lovely event, although I felt like most of Dirk's family and the folks from his church treated me like I was a space alien. That was also the first time I had ever seen Dirk in person and spoken more than five words from him, and the majority of our conversation as the wedding was winding down was him encouraging me to switch to a better church for Moira's sake. After a few months, calls started to come more frequently from Moira. She was clearly struggling with adjusting to being married and not really knowing too many folks, although she always insisted that Dirk's parents and siblings and the church folks were super nice. But she wasn't working and she wasn't in school, and I think she was going a little crazy with boredom. I was sad about this but also selfishly happy to hear from her so much and our conversations skirted theology, and I didn't offer her unwanted advice, but we kept the conversations mostly light. Moira was looking forward to having children, Dirk wanted a big family, probably in part to give her more to do, but it seems that they were having difficulty conceiving. Moira told me that Dirk blamed Moira and refused to go to a doctor to check on his swimmers. It seems like his answer was to just have sex as often as possible, whether Moira was in the mood or not. Again, I tiptoed around the subject and just tried to be supportive and only offered advice in areas that Moira specifically asked me for. I knew telling her what I really felt was only going to get her mad, and it would be unhelpful. About six months ago, Moira stopped complaining about how brutal it was to try and get pregnant, and even though she didn't say anything, I knew that meant that she was. I kept it to myself, just happy that she was so happy. But she called me crying right before Thanksgiving that she had miscarried. I asked her if she wanted me to come to her, and for the first time since she got married, she said yes. I was in my car less than an hour later and got there in the morning. Dirk was at work even though Moira was an absolute mess, and I did my best to comfort her. At some point I told her about my ectopic pregnancy to let her know how awful I knew she felt. We did a lot of hugging and crying together that day. When Dirk came home, he mostly ignored us and seemed more annoyed about the whole thing than supportive. The next morning, after Dirk went to work, Moira asked me about my ectopic pregnancy, especially what had happened to the baby. I explained that they needed to abort the baby because it was growing and it could have become life-threatening to me. Moira got extremely angry at me, telling me that her pastor had once mentioned that most fallopian ectopic fetuses will actually migrate to the uterus on their own and that I was a selfish bitch for not putting my faith in God before a soulless doctor. I was stunned, and I regrettably lashed out at her, telling her that her pastor was full of shit and that as much as I wish I hadn't had to have an abortion, it was the only reasonable choice and any real Christian would understand that. Moira told me to leave the house right away. 
I tried to apologize, but she told me her miscarriage and trouble having children was definitely punishment for me killing my baby. I fled the house in tears. Since then, Moira doesn't answer my phone calls, texts, emails, anything. I found Dirk's work number, but he told me to never call again and hung up on me. I was so depressed, but I am in therapy and on medication, and found a Facebook group for parents who have lost contact with children for religious reasons, so that has been a little helpful. But it's the fucking worst thing I've ever dealt with. Some days I still feel like I don't have a will to live, but just thinking about my daughter gives me strength to go on, hoping that she'll let me back into her life. Whether it's because she comes to understand better what happened or because she needs me, I don't really care. I just miss her so much. Edit. Thank you so much to all the folks who are kindly responding. Just to be clear, I did stop reaching out after Dirk hung up on me, aside from sending an I love you text every few days. Probably Moira blocked me, but if she hasn't or if she ever decides to unblock me, hopefully she'll just know that no matter what decisions she has made, I'll always love her. Update. I first wanted to thank all the super supportive comments and private messages. I really appreciate the goodness in folks. Also thank you to the person who sent me multiple PMs asking for pictures of my feet. I always am impressed how someone can look past content and feel the urge to jerk off to some rando's feet. So TLDR of my previous post, my daughter Moira married an evangelical young man named Dirk, moved into his community, and things were rough between us, culminating with her blaming her miscarriage on the abortion I had really an ectopic pregnancy that had to be ended. I have done my best to stay away from her, even though I love and miss her very much. I don't really have any other family besides her and I wasn't always good about keeping friends. But I've been in therapy and trying to put myself more out there. Ironically at my church, which is a wonderful open community, although just thinking about Moira would make me tear up, I was doing my best to lead my life without her. Six weeks ago, I had just gotten home from a lunch date with a guy that I've been seeing when my front door buzzed. I thought maybe it was my gentleman caller. I'm not at the booty call stage, but perhaps he just missed my smiling face and buzzed them up without asking and opened the door and was shocked to see Dirk come out of the elevator. I let him in and did my best not to yell at this young man who took part in brainwashing my daughter and he stammered out that he was sorry for everything that had happened. He then laid out the entire story. He had gone to the large public university where he ultimately met Moira because it was far away from his parents, as he had a lot of doubts about what he had been religiously indoctrinated with his whole life. His parents had only agreed to let him go to the school on the condition that he stayed active in a specific student group, the facility advisor who was known to the local church as being an upstanding evangelical. Dirk had agreed and would go to events but also tried to use his time on campus to explore and better understand why he felt what he had been taught was wrong going to other Christian groups events and even a gasp mixer for all religions. He ended up being president of the student group because the advisor recommended it and Dirk doesn't know how to say no. Unfortunately, and unbeknownst to me, Moira was roofied a few weeks into her sophomore year. Luckily for her, Dirk was at the party, identified what was happening, and got her out of the party before anything worse could happen and stayed with her until she was physically recovered. Moira was understandably traumatized, but for her own reasons didn't feel comfortable sharing it with me, which breaks my heart tbh, or going to the school's counselors for help. But she did latch on to Dirk, and he admitted he didn't mind having this pretty girl around a lot. Since part of his routine was his evangelical stuff, Moira started going to those meetings and events in the local church and possibly because of her trauma, really embraced it all. This wasn't great for Dirk since he was trying to pull away, but now this girl who he liked and who he also felt like he needed to protect was getting into the evangelical stuff. He wondered if it was a sign from God that he needed to ignore his misgivings. In the spring semester, when 2020 shut down the school, Dirk asked Moira if it be possible that he could come home with her, but she said that the opposite would be better so they went back to his hometown, where the church refused to close. So now Moira was really only going to three places, the house that she was staying at, that was full of very nice but very evangelical folks, Dirk's parents' house, who were also very nice but very evangelical, and the church, where I'm not going to pass judgment on if the pastor was nice or not, but who was preaching a very strong brew that Moira readily drank. When Dirk was told by his parents and the pastor that he should marry Moira, he proposed, Moira said yes, and he took a job in a call center run by one of the parishioners in the church. When I pointed out that the only time we talked at the wedding, Dirk tried to get me to join his church, but he has a different recollection on that conversation. Dirk says I was being cornered by his creepy uncle and that he came over to get me away from Hansi Harold, not his real name, 
and literally couldn't think of anything to talk about but that I had brought up how Moira had gotten more religious, and Dirk claims that he was saying that his church does that to people, but not necessarily in a good way. So this conversation was quite lengthy, and when he gets to the part that Moira is with him, I jumped up and started yelling about where she was. He told me she was at a coffee shop down the street, so I basically ran there and the two of us ugly cried as we reunited. We went back to my apartment and the three of us continued our conversation. There were a lot more tears and hugs and apologies all around, and I told them that I would help them as best as I could. I'm not exactly swimming in money, but I bought a queen-sized bed to put in Moira's old bedroom, and my not-quite-boyfriend helped Dirk get an office job. Moira got a retail job and is talking about re-enrolling in college in the fall, which I think is great. They are still living with me, but on Monday we looked at an apartment just down the street from me, as both are adamant about being close, and they will hopefully be signing a lease there very soon. I am doing my best to see Moira who she is now, an adult woman who is flawed just like all of us, not the teenage girl who was my best friend. And Dirk is a sweet kid who's trying to find his place in the world and needs to be a better advocate for himself. The past few weeks he has come with me to my church, and we'll see if that's more his speed. I think he desperately wants to find some sort of connection to God, and I recommended he tries to connect with my pastor who is a lot more open-minded and articulate about this stuff than his old pastor was. Moira is also feeling things out. She's going to therapy on her own, and the two of them are also planning on going to couples therapy to really firm up that all-important base to their marriage.